I am just astounded at how many people are aware of this case and how many people have a distorted view. What would you say if I told you she wasn't driving? Oh no, she was driving. What would you say if I told you that's a wrong report and she was not driving? to BJ Investigates, a show I just created and might never do again. So today, we're going to be talking about a case that you've probably all heard about. The McDonald's spill the hot coffee in the lap into the nether regions area incident lawsuit case. Now, I want you to take every single thing you think you know about that case, all the facts, all the figures, all the people, all the players, put it all in a little ball and put it in the dumpster where it belongs. Because I too thought that I knew about this case based on of course, what I heard in the media. In Albuquerque, an 81-year-old woman has been awarded $2.9 million after she sued McDonald's, claiming their coffee was too hot. It seems she was holding a cup between her legs while driving. A jury in Albuquerque has awarded almost $2.9 million to a woman scalded by a cup of McDonald's coffee. And guess what? I was wrong, and so are you, most likely. So let's get started. Okay, this is basically what I thought about this case before I ever, you know, really started looking into it for real. I thought, some dumb put hot coffee on herself, and now forever and always into the future, we all gotta put hot on the tops of the coffee cups to let everybody know that the hot drinks are hot. If that were true, yeah, that is dumb. Like people need to take a little bit of personal responsibility and accountability for the things that they put in and around their bodies. But that's not exactly what happens. Today, we're gonna get into the facts, the figures, and the actual evidence that the jury in this case heard. And then you tell me at the end, comment down below, if you still feel the same about this case as you did before you heard all the evidence. Let's get into it. In 1994, an elderly woman by the name of Stella Liebeck spilled scalding hot coffee in her lap after purchasing it from a McDonald's restaurant. She was hospitalized for eight days following the injury and she needed extensive skin grafting. Now there are some extremely um, graphic photographs that I don't think we're even gonna be able to show you here, but they are available online and you're welcome and free to go and look them up yourself. Not only was she hospitalized for over a week and required extensive surgeries for this, she had to undergo two years of restorative treatment after the injury occurred. The only thing that Stella sought from McDonald's was the amount of money that it actually took to pay for her medical bills in the case. McDonald's instead went ahead, turned around and offered her a measly little $800 for her extensive and severe burns. Y'all, it required skin to be taken off other parts of her body and put onto the parts that were burned with this hot coffee, okay? This is way hotter than just any little hot coffee beverage, but we're gonna get into the evidence. So how did McDonald's manage to have the entire world rooting for this huge corporation versus an injured little old lady? Let's get into it. Now, many of you remember the case of Stella Liebeck and the scalding hot McDonald's coffee. The scalding hot McDonald's beep uh, beep case. Uh, day. Stella was framed by big news corporations at large as having a frivolous lawsuit, but that couldn't be further from the truth. You see, Stella's case was used by an already existing political narrative push to reduce a little old lady's severe burns into a mud-slinging war that was played out on live television. A campaign was created throughout the media, making it look down upon, ridiculous, and embarrassing to file a legitimate lawsuit against a person or a business at risk of that person's case being deemed frivolous. God forbid it be called frivolous. I've been thinking of quitting work here and suing big companies for a living instead. Suing has become a popular American pastime, and I'd like to get in on some of that easy money. A college student sued his college because his roommate partied too much. A Florida man sued because he got a bad haircut. Of course, many of these lawsuits fail, but you might win. <sighs> Stella Liebeck did because of a cup of coffee. Something you might not have known was Stella was in remarkable health when all of this unfolded. According to her daughter, even given her age, she never spilled anything. 
and she was working full time up until the week before this whole thing happened. Now, since the story was disseminated into the collective consciousness through news, a lot of the general public feel that they know exactly what happened in this case. But the publicly known story couldn't be further from the truth. So if you ask any random person on the street what happened to the McDonald's coffee lady, they're probably gonna tell you that the woman was driving her car through a McDonald's drive-through, balanced her coffee between her legs, spilled it all over herself, and sued McDonald's for millions of dollars because her dumb ass didn't know that coffee was hot. I am just astounded at how many people are aware of this case and how many people have a distorted view of the case. It doesn't matter where I am or who I speak to. They, oh yeah, I know all about that. And well, what do you know? I got this picture in my mind that she actually pulled up, maybe took the coffee and dumped it. I think she went through the drive-thru. She was driving the car. Tried to drive and drink it at the same time. And then the lid might have popped open and it spilled on her lap. Had it between her legs. It spilled in her lap, it was too hot. And then sued McDonald's for millions of dollars. And I'll say, what would you say if I told you she wasn't driving? Oh no, she was driving. What would you say if I told you that's a wrong report and she was not driving? She was in the parking lot. She was in the passenger seat. My nephew was driving. However, Stella never sued McDonald's for millions of dollars and she wasn't even the one driving. I wanted to get the top off to put cream and sugar in so I put it between my knees to steady it with this hand trying to yeah. get the top off, and it just went, ooh. Okay, so hey, you gonna show me the burns? Yeah. What? Yeah. Would that change your mind at all? Wow. Yes, if I saw injuries like that, I would definitely uh, take a different view of it from what I hear from the media. Oh my gosh. I was burned so severely that uh, they didn't think I would live. I'm a nurse and I was horrified at the type of injuries that she had sustained. Yet this did not stop the news from running with this false story on as large of a scale as possible. In Albuquerque, New Mexico, an elderly woman was severely burned when she spilled a cup of McDonald's coffee in her lap. Stella Liebeck spilled just eight ounces of coffee, but she attracted a flood of attention. I mean, we're talking literally international news. Now, what I'm about to show y'all is a clip from the 2011 documentary, Hot Coffee, where Stella's grandson walks us through the incident so we can truly see what actually happened. I pulled out of here knowing that we, I needed to get organized if I was gonna be eating and driving. And I knew she wanted to put her cream and sugar in the coffee, so pretty much pulled right here, almost exactly in the spot, and handed her a coffee, or had already done that. And, so we just went about organizing and short period after that she started screaming. Why would these various pedestrians believe this McDonald's coffee lie? Because of news clips like this one. An 81 year old woman has been awarded 2.9 million dollars after she sued McDonald's claiming their coffee was too hot. And this one. Like the McDonald's person leaned over the car and poured it, it was an accident. Some news reports had the facts all wrong. They said that Stella was driving while she spilled the coffee, but in reality, she was not driving when her coffee spilled, nor was the car she was in even moving. No one was driving the car she was in when the coffee spilled. She was the passenger in a car that was stopped in the McDonald's parking lot where she bought the coffee. She had the cup between her knees while removing the lid to add cream and sugar, and then the cup tipped over and spilled most of the contents into her lap. The coffee was not just hot, but dangerously hot. McDonald's corporate policy at the time was to serve it at a temperature that could cause serious burns in seconds to anyone. Miss Liebeck's injuries were far from frivolous. She was wearing sweatpants at the time, something that any normal reasonable person would be wearing at any given time, and the sweatpants caused the hot coffee to stay against her skin. Within a few seconds, she suffered third degree burns. Not first degree, that's like a sunburn. Not second degree, but third degree burns where the entire top layer of her skin immediately just disintegrated off of her body. It required skin grafts on her inner thighs and her other area down there. And her case was far from an isolated incident. McDonald's had received more than 700 
previous reports of injury from it, specifically from its coffee, including reports of third degree burns and had paid settlements out in some of these cases. Now, here's some of the evidence that the actual jury heard in Stella's case during the trial, and this can be found on California.org's Consumer Protection Attorney page. First of all, McDonald's operation manual required the franchisee to hold its coffee and to serve it at between 180 and 190 degrees Fahrenheit. But coffee at that temperature, if spilled, will cause third degree burns within three to seven seconds. So obviously McDonald's knew this coffee was really hot. They were paying out settlements. They had received 700 reports that the coffee was making people have burns up to third degree burns. The science is there that you're gonna get third degree burns within three to seven seconds if this stuff is on you and it stays on you if you have sweatpants or something like that. The chairman of the Department of Mechanical Engineering and Biomechanical Engineering at the University of Texas testified in the case that this risk of harm is unacceptable, as did a widely recognized expert on burns, the editor-in-chief of the Journal of Burn Care and Rehabilitation. Now, McDonald's admitted to the jury that it knew about the risk of the serious burns from its scalding hot coffee for over 10 years by the time the incident happened in 1994. The risk had repeatedly been brought to McDonald's attention through numerous other claims and suits. Well, I feel like McDonald's gonna send me a cease and desist. An expert for the company testified that the number of burns was insignificant when compared to the billions of cups of coffee that the company served each year, which how on God's green earth can you say something like that? People are having to get skin removed from parts of their body and put somewhere else. If even one person out of a billion that happens to, it's not insignificant, you toenail. At least one juror in the trial told the Wall Street Journal she thought the company wasn't taking the injuries seriously, which if they're calling 700 people making complaints insignificant, then I would agree with that juror. To the corporate restaurant giant, those 700 injury cases caused by hot coffee seemed relatively rare compared to the millions of cups of coffee that it served. But the juror noted that there was a person behind every number. And I don't think the corporation was attaching enough importance to that. I agree with that juror. Am I, is it me? Did I time travel? It sounds like we thought the same thing. So McDonald's quality assurance manager testified that McDonald's coffee at the temperature at which it was poured into styrofoam cups, oh, canceled, we don't got no more styrofoam in New Jersey, y'all, was not fit for human consumption at that temperature because it would actually burn your mouth and throat. That was McDonald's quality assurance manager testifying this. <laughs> Can't drink it at that temperature out of the styrofoam cup, what? This trial sounds like a mess. McDonald's also admitted at trial that consumers were unaware of the extent of the risk of serious burns from spilled coffee served at McDonald's then required temperature. And McDonald's admitted it did not warn customers of the nature and extent of this risk and could offer no explanation as why it did not. So that's the question. You can't even drink it at that temperature. It's gonna burn your mouth and your throat, says the McDonald's quality assurance person. So why is it a requirement at all or why was it a requirement at all to be serving it at that hot of a temperature? Don't make no sense to me. At trial, jurors believed that the quote facts were so overwhelmingly against the company and the McDonald's had quote a callous disregard for the safety of the people that it was serving. Now, this story was pushed by big business so much that it eventually began leaking into pop culture. Late night hosts would tear poor old Stella Liebeck to shreds. Now she claims she broke her nose on the sneeze, got it the sizzler, bending over looking at the chickpeas. Framing it as though she was suing McDonald's for a mistake she had made. So, oh, my coffee was too hot. It's coffee. Jerry Seinfeld. Oh, Jerry Seinfeld even included an entire storyline based around Stella on his classic sitcom Seinfeld, where someone spills coffee on their nether region and sues for millions. Now, around this time, organizations began popping up called Citizens Against Lawsuit Abuse, plant organization, an astroturf organization. However, calling themselves citizens was a little bit misleading since they were all run by PR firms who were being hired by giant conglomerates and corporations to basically make them not look as bad as they should have looked based on, I don't know, reality. Now, George W. Bush would even go on a tour explaining how OBGYNs were being shut down and trying to cure directly to tort reforms. Texas must and the junk lawsuits that clog our courts and threaten our producers. And so it's with great pleasure that I sign a cap on punitive damages that will add certainty to the business climate. No one 
has ever been healed by a frivolous lawsuit. I urge the Congress to pass medical liability reform. Our economy is held back by irresponsible class actions and frivolous asbestos claims. And I urge Congress to pass legal reforms this year. Because lawsuits are driving many good doctors out of practice, leaving women in nearly 1,500 American counties without a single OBGYN, I ask the Congress to pass medical liability reform this year. Somehow this is related to OBGYNs getting shut down, which listen, I don't really care your political opinion one way or, the, or another, but the logical fallacy is, is inconsistent here because George W. Bush sure didn't give 1.25 beep that he, under his presidency, only five abortion clinics remained open in the state of Texas. So either you care about that OBGYN care or you don't, just pick a side and stick with it. That's all I'm gonna say. You know what I mean? Or we can't say fuck beep. YouTube no more. What the beep? Now, tort reform generally refers to changes in the civil justice system in common law. That's where a private citizen can sue another private citizen or a corporation, etc. It's not the same thing as a criminal justice, which is where someone breaks a law that's a crime, right? And sometimes torts and crimes are the same, right? Like, you know, theft, for example, can be a crime, but larceny can be a tort where you steal from someone else, they can sue you for it. But if you steal from, you know, a big corporation, God forbid you steal from the C CVS, then the government can prosecute you and that's criminal. So when we're talking about tort reform, we're talking about private citizens suing private citizens. Now, what even is a private citizen anymore? Under tort reform, countries that aim to reduce the ability of plaintiffs to bring tort actions, meaning reduce the ability of someone to sue another organization or another person, um, or to reduce the damages, which means the money that they can receive in such a lawsuit. Such changes are generally justified under the grounds that litigation is not an efficient or appropriate means to solve personal problems or to compensate plaintiffs. Now, plaintiffs are the ones who are doing the suing. Defendants, of course, are the ones getting sued. It's real interesting that they don't really take this all the way into the defamation field. They will let anybody sue anybody for saying anything. It's like, oh, we don't really give a beep about your free speech rights and your ability to report on the news. No, no. Any Lemmy Yavrimovich or any uh, Ivan Yavrimovich or any Aura.com can go on ahead and sue you for some beep. But God forbid you be able to get a million dollars whenever you have to have your entire genitals redrafted and regrafted it onto your body. No, God forbid, but we gonna let people sue you for using your free speech. It's, this is where we live, y'all. And I honestly, I can't live here for much longer. Land of the free, my ass. My -American life. Okay, so under these citizens against PR reform, whatever in the hell they were trying to do, they attempted to make citizens against law abuse look grassroots. However, these organizations were carefully curated and backed by the tobacco industry's limitless bank accounts. Supposedly, these groups are run by community leaders and business owners in their respective cities, but upon closer look, these organizations were run by PR firms. And according to the documentary Hot Coffee, there was a direct link between the PR that big business was funding for tort reform and the laws being passed, which, which we've seen before. Axe the Free Act, Charlie Crist, Nancy Mace, looking right at you. And we've seen these fake lobbyist groups try to infiltrate movements before. Free Britney America, anyone? Whatever happened to them? I thought they cared so much about the Britney, Britney Spears freedom and Britney's conservatorship. What, whatever happened to them people? They're gonna change the laws, write and change.org positions, and then they disappear like a candle in the wind, girl. Where is Cassandra Dumbass? I'm also just so grateful for the people that I met throughout this process. I mean, my life changed radically a year ago. We have seen this in our our movement. I never thought I would be on the news. I never thought I would be working with Congress. But I guess it's just nothing new. The term sue thy neighbor and everybody suing started getting printed on bumper stickers and t-shirts. McDonald's coffee case was the main lawsuit being discussed and Stella was the center of attention. Meanwhile, she's in the hospital for eight days and trying to heal her skin grafted nether regions and she's getting dragged across the internet, dragged and wasn't even the internet yet, dragged across live television and sitcoms and comedy and people are making fun of her. Like I can literally not even imagine. So minus all this political agenda pushing and all these fake groups, which we've seen. What happened in Stella's case? 
Well, the case went to trial and the jurors finally saw the graphic photos of Liebeck's burns. They heard experts testify about how hot the coffee should be and that McDonald's coffee was 30 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit, hotter than any coffee served by other companies. The jury learned that 700 other people, including little children, had been burned before, maimed, and the company did not change its policy of keeping coffee between 180 and 190 degrees Fahrenheit. The company knew its coffee was causing serious burns, but it decided that with billions of cups served annually, this number was not significant. The goal of the lawsuit was to try to right this wrong. Quote, we knew before the lawsuit was filed that the temperature of the water was 190 degrees or so, and the franchise documents required that of the franchisee, said Kenneth Wagner, an Albuquerque lawyer who represented Stella in the case. Most home coffee makers produce coffee that is between 135 and 150 degrees. Coffee that other restaurants serve at 160 degrees can also cause third degree burns, but it takes 20 seconds for those burns to occur, which usually would give the person enough time to wipe away the coffee before that happens. Then the attorney went on to say, our position was that the product was unreasonably dangerous and the temperature should have been lower, Wagner said. So in the trial, jurors awarded Stella $200,000 in compensatory damages for her pain, suffering, and medical costs. But those damages were reduced by $40,000 to $160,000 because they found her 20% responsible for the injuries. So in lawsuits, a lot of times, depending on the tort regime in each jurisdiction, which means each state, sometimes if a plaintiff can be found partially responsible for their injuries, then the money that they receive would go down based on their portion of responsibility. Some cases it's like, no, if you're any responsible at all as a plaintiff, you get no money. If you're studying for your law school final, just make sure that you understand and you know that each jurisdiction has has a different regime and you have to know which one you're dealing with. So it looks like she was in the type of jurisdiction that, that did allow for the compensatory damages to have been reduced based on her level of responsibility. And in this case, the jury would have had to have found her 20% responsible for her own damages. It doesn't end there. They awarded $2.7 million to Stella for punitive damages. And that amounted to about two days of revenue for McDonald's coffee sales. The trial judge reduced that two point seven million dollar amount to only four hundred eighty thousand dollars but the judge did note the mcdonald's behavior had been quote willful wanton and reckless. And I'm sure the judge based that decision on the fact that McDonald's had reason to know that their coffee was unreasonably hot and it was burning people. 700 people had already complained about it. They had already paid out monetary settlements to people to avoid going to trial. And so the judge said, maybe Stella doesn't need $2.7 million, but I'm gonna let them have to pay her something because they did know that this was a possibility and they still kept serving the coffee at this heat. And not only did they keep serving it, it was a request requirement. They had to serve it there. So the franchisee had no, no choice. If they weren't following the McDonald's corporate's rules, then they could have gotten in a lot of trouble. So I think the judge probably considered those things whenever he or she was deciding this case. But the parties later settled for a confidential amount. According to the news, I don't know if we could believe them or not, but I'm just telling y'all what they said. This amount that they settled on was less than $500,000. So all that stuff y'all heard about she got all these millions of dollars wasn't even true. She got less than $500,000. And even if you look at the amounts that were awarded by the judge, it's still less than $700,000, which isn't even 1 million. So all this stuff about, oh, suing for millions of dollars, she got millions, that's not even true. It's fake. It's fake, literal fake news. And this fake news was used and capitalized on and quite literally exploited by these fake grassroots movements by these fake PR organizations calling themselves citizens for sheep and twisted by the highest level of politics in order to pass laws that make it harder for people like you and me to be awarded for things whenever these corporations are actually quite literally throwing our health in the garbage and saying it's insignificant. It's just, it's just 700 people. People. That's and, and here we are, her, 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 her. The coffee's hot, dumbass, sitting here following and falling right along in it. What? We gotta stop. We gotta stop all that. We have seen stuff so similar to this in the Free Britney movement, where we see these groups of lobbyists come out of literally nowhere, calling themselves citizens, concerned citizens, moms, humans, this, that, and the other. And it's like, I don't, I don't know. That it's just not really exactly how how it 
works. It's not concerned citizens, it's paid lobbyists. Just disappear into the ether. We never heard from them people ever again. And this whole thing is honestly, the whole reason I'm making this video is for two reasons. One, I like the truth. And I think y'all need to know the truth. But as always, don't take my word for it. Go read those court documents yourself. Go look at them yourself. Go watch the documentaries yourself by the family, by the jurors. Read the things that the people on the jury had to say. Don't just take freaking McDonald's hired PR agent's word for it. How stupid can we be? And I'm saying we, because before I went to law school, this is what I thought happened. I'm like, that is so dumb. Every time I look at caution hot on the top of a cup, I'm like, oh my God, people are so dumb. They don't know coffee's hot. How stupid. No, I don't know that. I didn't know the coffee was hot enough that in three seconds I need a skin graft. No, I did not. And if I did know that, I would be a lot more careful with the coffee. Now, I feel like it's like actually just reduced to like not even working anymore because now we're rolling our eyes about this greedy old stupid lady who couldn't even figure out coffee was hot when that's not exactly what happened. McDonald's knew that the coffee was unreasonably hot. Their quality control manager said that at 190 degrees Fahrenheit, it was too hot to put in your mouth, it would burn your throat. They knew it. They had paid out cash settlements to people who had third degree burns. They had 700 people complain about getting maimed and injured by their coffee. They continued not only to serve it at that temperature, but to require it to be served at that temperature. What was there? Why do they want it to be so hot? So we just filmed for the hot coffee McDonald's incident with Stella Liveck, and I thought during it, I said, you know what, Jake, we should just go see what temperature McDonald's in Princeton, New Jersey is serving their coffee at. Because 1994 was almost 30 years ago, and presumably they would have learned their lesson by now. So we also realized we didn't have a thermometer. So we're gonna go. <gasps> In order to measure the temperature of the coffee, we need a thermometer, which we do not have. So we're gonna go buy a thermometer. Then we're gonna go to the, go to the Mac Cafe. Then we're gonna park. We're not gonna put the coffee between nobody's knees. And we're gonna measure, how do you call temp? We're gonna measure the temperature? Is that how you say that? Yeah, we're gonna measure the temperature. Yeah, as soon as we can, as, as we're gonna see. As we get we're gonna see what the temperature is. We're gonna dip is. it right in as they hand it to us. What are we hoping? What are we hoping? That it's between 130 and 150. But to be honest, like I never can drink hot coffee straight, like when they give it to me. I always have to wait for it to cool down anyway. It was so, when I worked at Dunkin' Donuts, it was so hot right away when we would give it to them. Too hot it, even. The cup was too hot. Yeah, and like, um, styrofoam isn't even allowed in New Jersey, so I don't know what they're putting this coffee in. We're gonna see. It's gonna be an investigation. BJ investigates on the road. Have you been seeing Rich Lux's Sloan coverage? Wait, Rich Lux is covering Sloan? Many episodes. Oh, I gotta see that. There I was, shopping. Saks Fifth Avenue, girl. Christmas shopping. And my phone's blowing up. Did you see what Sloan posted? Did you see what Sloan posted? And here I am. I can't get a day off to save my life. That oh, sounds it's interesting. A whole Oh my god. Wait, the girls aren't fighting, right? They're happy. No, they're oh good, they're happy. They good. seem Sloan and Rich Lux seem to be on the same page of things. Rich Lux is kinda like, okay, y'all saying that it's a troll. <laughs> a troll why what, what motivation would a troll have? It's one of the people Sloan talked about most likely. It says multi-use, not oven safe, so we just can't put it in the oven because the oven would melt it. It looks like it has an egg McMuffin on it. Well that seems like a good sign then. Let's go. private parking lots thinking they can reserve all these spots for all this stuff. Reserve drive through reserve pregnant people, reserve mobile order. Y'all need to relax. Okay, let's go in. Ooh, I think I saw Stella live back over there. One um, hot coffee, please. One hot coffee? Yes. Oh, sorry. Um, it's not like a I say get medium. Medium. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. 180? 180? Yes. Thank you so much. That's nice. Thank you. Okay, back to the car. I'm keeping it warm in my coat. Spilled! Spilled on. Okay, let me just put the thermometer. <laughs> oh my god, are you okay? Yeah, oh my oh, god. Oh, that's good. Maybe they did fix the temperature. I'm fine. But we're not very prepared. Our next investigation will be more uh, thought through. 
I love it. I'm hoping it's between 130 and 150 because that's normal coffee in the. It's going up. It's <gasps> going up. Oh no, y'all. Stella, we wait, gotta have to Wait, wait, wait. Oh shit. <gasps> oh, sorry. What's going on? 160. Y'all, should we get another one just to see? Whoa, it's still going up. Oh. Welcome to the BJ Investigates Investigation oh, shit. Lab. Well, 160 is not 180. But we walked But it, it is there. still going up. As you can see, I did suffer a little bit of a spill. It did spill on me, but thankfully I'm wearing this. I was hoping it would be in between 130 and 150 Fahrenheit. Yeah, it's like stopped at about 162 and a half. So I will say it's not the 180 to 190, but this temperature could still give you third degree burns, but it would take like 20 seconds instead of three to seven seconds. Three to seven seconds, Stella's attorney argued, was too fast to be able to like, for a reasonable person to be able to get off them. But 20 seconds is like, girl, wipe the coffee off. It's, it's hot. You have 20 seconds, get it off. She says that she still has coffee on her coat. It's cold now. And of course, Taylor is the name of the thermometer. I'm blaming Lou Taylor for Stella's burns somehow, some way. That also had to come from outside. That took time to travel to us. If you were I in the drive I did keep it in my coat. Should we go to another one in the drive through? Through? Should we get a drive through coffee yeah, just, yeah. but we did get a little bit hotter of a temperature than we anticipated we thought it was going to be between 130 and 150 fahrenheit and turns out that this coffee that we got from inside the mcdonald's was 162.5 degrees give or take um we're gonna try it through the drive-thru because it is about like 30 to 40 degrees outside right now so walking with it through the parking lot might have cooled it off so now we're gonna do a quick transfer and measure it again I i'm anticipating it's gonna be exactly the same but just to try it out okay so we got it yeah pull straight up ready <gasps> oh put the park on i did what an i did i did this is a small Last one was a medium. Same type of situation. It's stopping right around here. We'll wait for a couple more moments, I suppose. Yeah, I think it's But hot. look, look, caution, hot. At least they're telling people. Caliente. And if you disagree with me, I'm gonna delete your comments. Facts ain't defamation. Love you, mean it. Okay, bye.